Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Northern Arena presented by Bell. We've got game two of NP versus FDL game one. A complete slaughter as NP ran over the likes of friendship, dedication, and love. Here in game two, we'll see if FDL can switch it up and take us into an ace match, or we could possibly be witnessing the fastest series in Northern Bell Beat Invitational presented by Bell history. Trent, how you feeling after that game one? That was nice. That was quite the mouthful, dude. Whew, I know. I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> Practicing for the right. land, dude. Yeah, no, I can see that. It really rolled off the tongue. It sounded great. <laughs> what, uh, what do we got different here this time? Oracle still in the pool. Elder Titan out. No love. Getting rid of that big old beefy bastard. Came down and put uh, kind of that pressure down to the safe lane that, yeah, he died first, but just that constant pressure of like being in a safe lane and being in that mid area where he was messing around with 747 stacks and jungling and whatnot made a big impact. And yeah. then it's always tough to come back into a fight. When you're fighting at a, a non-stop disadvantage, like the longer the game goes, the more disadvantage you still have. Not only because the gold was stacking up on the side of NP, but those levels in the aura from Elder Titan too. Yeah, that's true. We didn't really mention that much, but it definitely makes a, a big difference. Interesting here that FDL opts for the Shadow Demon first pick uh, over the Oracle. We saw or Oracle either first picked or first banned in, in games against uh, this team. And here they've passed it up for the, the other support. So... Shadow Demon, name of the game. Maybe they'll be the ones to try a little uh, illusion harass this go around. Juggernaut, though, for NP. Nice safe carry. Sand. And the Sand King. Comfort zone for them. Passing up the Void, but grabbing another uh, meta combo. Yeah, nice little bit of versatility. And, and again, something you know that we have seen them use. I, I do like the Shadow Demon first. I think it makes a lot of sense for FDL. Um, straying away from that oracle, but for the most part, when What's they were the oracle, picking oracle man? first, it was always banned. Um, nice. or rather, when they were picking oracle, shadow demon was banned. So, kind of makes sense that now that the uh, okay. shadow demon and oracle are left in, they go for the SD. Okay, yeah, I, I see. That's that's a fair point. Axe now banned out by or uh, picked up by FDL rather. Some good synergy between those two. Uh, drop it uh, with the disruption. Easy for Axe to follow up on the berserkers call. Um, not a bad hero to have His against Jug are either. Sick too. Yes, that's true. Not normally hey, the, the illusion harass hero you think about, but whew. Now that's really nice. The, MJW the classic damage. hero for him, man. He's like Nature's Prophet and Axe. I know those are two that really come to mind when I think of this guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm expecting big things. Kind of nice up against the Sand King. Always good to have some AoE options too, just to handle that sandstorm. It'd be very frustrating when he's just pressing W and getting away from you. You know, Oracle has some pretty intense lore. I d I'm just pulling it up here, and it's it's very detailed. He's got all sorts of... he. You know what race he is? He's a Cy Murray. He's like a cyborg furry. Sorry, that was off topic. <laughs> all right, <laughs> no, it's Razor. It's okay. Third I, was just, by you know, I was just considering Oracle and all his greatness, you know. Yeah, no, he's... It's just epic ascendance from the great seed of the Saimuri had for ages imported their oracles exclusively from the Ivory Incubarium, high in the hollow peaks of the Zealot's Range. Like, what oh in the God. world? What did All you right. just say? What? I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> like that, Jesus. You, know, you compare that to the lore of Morphling. I am a comet. Gah. Okay. I'm a comet? He's yeah, a comet? It's, uh, he's, like a, he's like a crashed comet that woke up and came to life. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to steal Slacks of Thunder here. I'm not going to lie. We hired him for the lore, but... Yeah, uh, no, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something really, really bad. Yeah. A dark comet circled. It held something to the planet, and then it was in stasis, and then once he crash landed, he woke up and was like, yo, let's fight. I'm a comet, and I'm mad. And that's Morphling. So he's like Superman? Uh, kind of, yeah, except... All right. Well, sort of, actually. He's hey, Speaking of the devil, that one's relevant. Morphling fourth band here by NP. Great illusion <laughs> yeah, I, I hero. You were huh? just leading into that, dude. Yeah. No, that... I... Fuck. Yes, I was. It was... <laughs> uh, Razor and Morphling, so... Uh, the Razor taken out by NP themselves. Yeah. Haven't, uh, had the pleasure of watching any uh, Razor mid there from FDL, but we have seen quite a bit of the OD, right? I believe that yep. was picked in... Th I want to say three games. Or got banned in one that was picked two straight. Um... The old uh, Not Today squad when they were playing up against them. So kind of similar lane dominators in the mid lane. Don't want to hand any or either of those over to 747. So it makes sense here. Yeah. And now Beastmaster, the fourth ban for FDL. Something NP played in game number one. 
What does NP want to do now? A very safe opener with Jug Sand King. Just good, well-rounded heroes that are flexible, mobile. They can fight, they can farm, do all sorts of stuff. Uh, these next few picks can, uh, picks can be very telling about where they want to go with this draft. Yeah. I, I'm kind of thinking like a, an Ursa or the um, like maybe the Lifestealer again. One of those kind of heroes. I, I think it's probably going to be NP mid with the Jug. Of course, that could always get switched up if they see something better. Safe um, lane void. Let's see it, boys. I haven't got to see AUI on that either. I don't think we have, but we'll be a little funky. Jug, not the most synergy with the Chrono, but Sand King definitely does. And you could grab some other supports that could uh, provide some good follow-up damage. I think Ursa's just really nice here Ooh, because you got yeah. rid of the Morphling, who's very hard to track down. Somebody you don't have an easy time controlling because it's hard to get fully itemized the up light. into the uh, like the Abyssal Blade or anything. Uh, and you also got rid of the Razor, who's similarly very obnoxious up against someone like the Ursa. And we saw AUI have a nice time on it. He's very safe. Once he gets six and you have Enrage, it's hard to come up and gank him. And they're on Dire side too, so they have some nice control over the Roche Pit already. Fits pretty well with a lot of their stuff. Like the Coddle here, though. Not that I think it's evidence that they're going to pick the Void, but an example of a support that can drop a lot of damage into a Chrono. Uh, we've seen a lot of Coddle against Timbersaw. We actually saw a Coddle backfire against Timbersaw the other day when we were casting. Um, but... Big global presence, moving people around the map. A lot of space creation. A support that can also make use of the jungle. I mean, a coddle can stack up, spend some time farming in the jungle, and having ags in a pretty timely manner. Then all of a sudden, you've got this crazy good team fight, at least during daytime. Yeah, it's true. We have seen quite a bit of uh, kind of greedier, I guess, oh, four is like Nick's four position. Um, I think both times we saw Sand King, it, it was position four as well for one, four, three, seven. So uh, going on past history. Uh, didn't we, we see it? This will be for him. Didn't we see it off lane one game? Didn't we see a position three? I thought so. I don't but maybe think not. for them. I might be confusing it with one of the other teams. We've seen Probably a lot of Saiyan Kings, but yeah. I mean, Saiyan King's great. Uh, like FDL, I think ran it off lane. Um, yeah, in our game last night for not today. So like, um, it, it can go mid, it can go off lane, it can do whatever the hell it wants. Um, I, I would guess probably four though. Then you kind of have a little bit slightly grittier with the keep of the light too. But mm -hmm. um, then we're already looking at Shadow Demon Axe Omni Knight. Lots of earlier kind of pressure. You could come on up in there, try and mess around with that Team NP. I'd like to see some some serious aggression from FDL, I think, this time. Yeah. Well, the NA Classic in the Omni Knight. We've seen him banned a couple of times. Not actually picked all so much. A lot of flexibility from the FDL draft, though. Do you think this is just 4 and 5 Omni Knight Shadow Demon? Uh, good call on the Ursa, by the way. NP will scoop it up here. Good hero. Good safe laner. Yeah, I'm not sure where this Omni's going to go, honestly. I wouldn't be too surprised, but end up being some wacky offlane. Offlane Omni. That's Omni kind of what I was thinking. I, I hesitated to say it, but I think if you have Omni and Shadow Demon as your two supports, you can be lacking on a, a bit of control. You, you've got the, the one setup from Shadow Demon, which doesn't really count as a stun. It's it's probably going to be four, just so we're clear. But I mean, four? <laughs> no, it's NA Dota, so you always have to throw oh, it yeah. out there. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it should be three acts. I don't think they're going to do, like, some complexity one roll axe or anything like that. Aggro uh, try. Yeah, no, like, that kind of stuff could happen, though, like, with even an offlane axe. Like, a lot of rotations coming up would be really nice for them. Just need a couple levels on axe early on. You know, and honestly, it's not a bad tri lane with those heroes. Because you got the setup from the Shadow Demon. Omni can get a heal bomb right on top. Axe has the disable and the damage. There's, there is some potential there if they wanted to do something a little wonky. Sometimes, I, I like that, there's that mindset where if you feel like you're outclassed, it's, it raises your risk tolerance a little bit to try to find an edge. I mean, we saw that, that level on Roche with that wonky lineup the other day. That, wasn't that the, the game that almost gave NP a, a run for their money, right? That was the one game that went on long where it seemed like they might lose. Am I misremembering? Or that no, was, that was yeah, against okay. um, Mason Stack. Oh, I think. yeah. I, think that I was, am misremembering. It was one of the teams versus Mason Stack that did, and I think they lost. They did. <laughs> they got, they they got did. level one Roche. Oh, yeah, the level one Roche worked. You're right. It, uh, they did win the game. Here we go. Now the Luna gets picked up. Great combo with the Shadow Demon, as we talked about, especially uh, in the later game. Once Luna gets nice and beefy, scales up with those stats, the illusions. Oh, man, can they knock down towers. And now you've got an Omni Knight to give her a free BKB in that early game so she can focus on those farming items. A lot of potential here. I like this FDL draft. I like where it's going. It has a lot of snowball potential. 
Axe, Luna, Omni Knight, Shadow Demon. Like, you get a little bit of a lead, you take down one hero or something, and that could be kind of a nice thing to think of with their mid laner, too. Just like that quick elimination of somebody and big stacked up crew. But if the Beastmaster wasn't banned, guys, you know, we, we yeah. totally be calling for that, you know, mid Beastmaster. We'll get the mech going. We'll be Fata, Dota, <laughs> back. <laughs> Mid Maybe. Beastmaster with a mech. My it's only like, God. Th what, three and a half, four years ago or something? <laughs> yeah, what year is it, man? Final no. bans. NP thinking about this one, burning most of their reserve time. Ah. And they opt to take out the Storm Spirit. Okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of the right idea. They're a little, a little bit, bit light slippery. on control. Yeah. Jump on in. That's a good ban. Who else is available here? Invoker, still in the pool. Something that NP could take. Or they're, no, oh, they're for, looking for an offlane. I think NP's looking offlane. Yeah, yeah, they're looking offlane. For FTL, like, I mean, Invoker being left in the pool is pretty scary. Um, That's true. The Alk. Alk still? Oh, Alk is still in. Alk. It's a good Alk game. A lot of Aghanim Scepters for FDL. <laughs> I love how that's always your default, but, uh, Dude, but it's good. Dude, that is like, if <laughs> you're not thinking about that when you're picking out, if you're not thinking about that, you're fucking up, man. It's a big <laughs> deal. It's a big deal. How many games have you seen where it's like, oh, they lost, but okay, they still have barracks. Alk is still mega farmed, and he feeds his team four agonims, and 40 minutes, or, uh, yeah, 40 minutes later, you've got a, a team that's turning things around. I've seen it too many times, Trent, not to mention the Luna Ags. Oh, one of the most underrated things in the game. I wish people would do it. It's so ridiculous in certain scenarios. Yeah, what was it? Mech, Mech Ags was. I guess it was like Ags. Burning who was doing it. Uh, that was like yeah. a, a, like a year and a I while. I feel like ago, you have mana that. issues with that, dude. That's oh yo, what a hero, Marana. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I kind of forgot about her. <laughs> yeah, a lot of magic. This is actually really good. They've got a great mix of magic damage and physical damage, and even some pure damage now with the axe. I'm liking this FDL lineup. Talk about the snowball. You get an early axe on or a blink on axe. You get an early ags on Marana. You're all looking. Right, so how do you how do you fight all this? You're looking good. Sorry, I just got banned. They only have three seconds. There's tied. like default tide or something. Darkseer. Darkseer. Okay. All right. Another idea. Put some, some pressure, pressure on. Early. Take a good team fighter. Yep. Hmm. I feel like both oh. drafts has a, have a, a lot of merit here. Because you can make a, a similar case for NP, right? If the Ursa gets a fast Blink Dagger, if this Dark Seer puts a lot of pressure on. like Even though FDL could ball out of control, NP have a lot of good teamfight tools. A lot of good counter initiation. going to be hard to actually teamfight into them with Sand King, Dark Seer, and Coddle. Yeah, you start to think about how like the fights are going to go down. I like some of the things they have, like mana leak and everything to control up. Some of these heroes like Axe and Omni Knight is very annoying. Like you can only repel so many people, but frustrating in that earlier parts of the game. The blast to keep people off the tower. You have iron shells to like if you've got Keeper of the Light holding back the push at one tower and Derek's here's on another lane, he can push out so quickly that you can really punish this. Yeah, but overall. I I feel like it's much more even in terms of the drafts of this game than the last one. The interesting part will be the laning setup here. Yeah. Okay, quick washroom break. Looks like Envy needs to run some warm water over his hands. The fastest two minutes of my life. <laughs> Ooh, look at the teepees go, man. Dota 2. Here we go. A smoke to boot. I heard on one of the, the beta tests, supposedly, they, they had taken out, like, and one of the, the more recent ones, like, sometime in the last, like, four or five months, you weren't able to TP before the horn went. It was, like, an, an attempted balance change, but they never went through with it. They only ever tested it and never actually put it into anything. Really? I thought it would have been kind of nice, though, in terms of these, like, war shenanigans. But in the end, I mean, then people are just smoking. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's kind, kind of, of funny, hard though. to prevent people from trying to get wards down early. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that change. It's kind of just like because there's no guaranteed. It's not something you can play around, if that makes sense. Like sometimes you just TP down here and no one's here. And you're like, okay, I just wasted 50 gold, but I secured my safe lane. But I don't know. So it's kind of like a coin flip. Right. Well, speaking of wards, Dire, they get one on the plateau near the tier one up top. And they'll block out the small camp here uh, in the enemy safe lane radiant. They'll drop a... Ward with some vision of the bottom rune spawn. I think they're still holding on to their others. Oh, what do they got? They got two sentries here. If they want to YOLO this. 
I mean, if they just wait, they're going to see that this one's not blocked. This one is. They can just guarantee D ward. Uh, they don't need the sentries for anything else, right? Unless you're going to be, like, ganking SVG. Doubtful. Yeah. So, <laughs> Very doubtful. they should be able to just play it a little bit safe and slow and make sure they have this pull camp. And then it's going to be pretty hard for MSS to contest. So lane set up for FDL, Shadow Demon, Omni Knight, and Luna will take the safe lane. Right now, Marana and Axe are both mid. And MJW is going to head right into the jungle. So they're actually sacking the off lane here and juggling the Axe at level one. That's a bit surprising. Yeah, this is going to work out pretty well for Keep of the Light, right? Like now he just has kind of free farming, do his own thing. This war doesn't pay off at all for them kind of sucks for the dire side but it's nice because they're going to see if someone does rotate down but they can just control up this lane and you might just see after a couple pulls might just rotate over here right if you're one four three seven mm -hmm. they're getting maximum efficiency going on here set up a couple stacks maybe for svg to come back up with caustic too right now he's level one they know he is caustic so you might see potential killer and svg if he's not too careful yeah it'll be interesting to see how the cs goes here i feel like this could be kind of risky for fdl because coddle it's one of those supports, as we mentioned, with a huge opportunity cost in terms of space in the jungle and what he can do with some early items and even just early experience. You know, a fast level 6 on him can be pretty good in team fights. Um, and then you still have nice. the safe lane Ursa completely free farming. Banking's doing a nice job down here, too. Just throwing poison stacks at this camp so the SVG can't pull it on over. No way for them to disrupt this. A lot of pressure now on the Axe to really come online for MJW getting that Blink Dagger as fast as he can. And then making a big play with it. MSS. They're getting pressured SPG in lane. Runs MJW. It was close, man. It was like, he comes around the corner. SVG's right here. If he had that call right away. Windley's saving SVG's life here. And now it just means he can soak up some experience from MJW. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing about this strategy. The, the NP supports have a, a lot of ability to pressure the axe if they want to. But at the very least, just steal some of his XP and limit spaces that he can farm you know kind of keep him locked to this this little area here and look what they've done with one four three seven now too they brought him down to the bottom lane so they're not going to go for some sort of a greedy like you know jungling coddle get a really fast eggs or anything like that instead it's just more about pressuring down this luna pressuring i mean you have an omni knight right like this is a support that doesn't offer a whole lot right now so if you can just pressure them and not allow them to get those uh, earlier levels up onto their supports easier thanks to jungling and whatnot and pulling down here then in the end, it's just going to benefit you. Keep your like and have a much easier time catching up and becoming relevant than like an Omni Knight will because he needs those team fights. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good point. And it fits the play style of, of NP. We've talked about this 4 plus 1 quite a bit. And having a coddle farming definitely uh, strays from that kind of general strat. SVG level 2 rotating on down. So put some AUI pressure on. Right <laughs> is he farming the, <laughs> the enemy hard camp? And he'll bump right into a bounty rune. Pretty nice for him. So FDL have rotated though. MJW just starting in the jungle. Now heads to the offlane where he can actually pressure the Ursa a little bit, especially since he's gotten some decent experience. And it yeah, will just be a try on bottom, try. It's just like, all right, time for me to go do my thing up here, right? Like he's got boots. Yep. Anyway, he's going to contest that. Oh, down bottom, stun forward. SVG looking for something here. Ion Shell helping him out. Now he gets surged in, Stan King. Low on mana, but repel. We'll keep him safe. Uh, top lane, MJW. And UI finds him, but he'll just TP home. Okay, a little bit of a close call. Great stuff for the Ursa, though. He'll just go right back to farming. Oh, yeah, he TP'd right home, too. Didn't go back to the tower or anything. Yeah. I guess while TP's on cooldown, he can't really go back into the lane. Yeah. I guess Ursa not completely free farming, but still doing very well in terms of CS. So, how's this mid matchup? Haven't really checked in too much here. Eternal Envy sitting at 20 CS, 21 on the bottom. Looks like a fairly stuff. even farm fest, yeah. Not too much kill potential on either side. I mean, Doug, Marana, pretty uh, typical laners from the past couple months here. Bottom lane, uh, it's a little bit of action here, but... SPG is just doing a really good job up. being a nuisance. You know, I, I feel like he's... Creating that illusion like he's just everywhere. You know, anytime this Omni turns around a corner, there's a Sand King just ready to hop in and steal his creeps. Yeah, and look how they're reacting to the nuisance, though. They have brought Sand King up to the top lane. He was spotted by this ward, so AUI can play around the fact that Shadow Demon's here, but 
it looks like they're trying to draw some more attention up top and it's doubtful that NP can accomplish anything while he's gone, right? It's not like they're just going to get a, a sudden kill on the Luna or anything. Maybe now with MSS coming back down, I want to hit like that third point nine shell work. It's really good, but they will at least pressure into the tower and see if they can find some sort of a dive play here. Yeah, the problem though is even with one four three seven in this tri lane, they're still getting a lot of farm working the stacks in the jungle. Shadow Demon only level two right now, lowest in the game, and it will start to become a bottleneck. Omni Knight, he is level four because he's just been hugging the Luna under the tower, but. I think NP are definitely getting the better of this exchange in terms of uh, farm and experience. It's fairly minor, no kills in five minutes, but they have edged out a nice little lead for themselves just in raw net worth. Stan King. Oh, could this be our first blood? It looks like it. MSS comes cruising on in. The underleveled Shadow Demon buys himself a couple of seconds with disruption. Arrow flies across. It actually hits uh, on the SVG. And they might be able to find a counter kill. They certainly will. Bisa on the Luna finds uh, the last hit there, and it makes it a one for one. Keeper of the Light getting that bonus gold on the first blood. So, small advantage for NP, but a small advantage at that. Yeah, they do get a nice ward down here, though. So, this will help keep an eye on this Axe, who's, by the way, MGW doing a great job consistently cutting those creeps up here. And just knowing, you know, he is visually AUI thanks to his own creeps going to the tower. And it's just meant that he is getting closer and closer to that Blink Dagger. And he's someone that can really turn this lineup right online for them. One, four, three, seven. Just run stuff out of the trees. Yeah, he'll be just fine. Luna feeling pretty under-leveled right now. Bisa, soon to be five. Has power treads. And on the lower end of the cores in terms of net worth for now. This tri-lane has definitely made Bisa's life a bit more difficult in terms of farming. We haven't quite gotten the, you know, free farm Bisa god levels today. Everyone's all over him. He doesn't get the AUI treatment. No, definitely not. Hey, why is like at the spa, dude? He's like getting a manicure. Oh, Every man. game we we uh, cast him. He really is. He's probably just got his music on right now, just <laughs> folk in he, the like, zone. He popped at a team speak once the game starts. <laughs> yeah. Like whatever, guys. Fine. You know, I mean, you expect that in some games. You know, there are other teams that play that four plus one style, but so far, it feel it's been like a hundred percent of their games have been this exact same. AUI is just that they create this safe zone for him, where it's like, all right, buddy, this is this is you right here. We're going to go distract him. Oh, look at Envy. He's going to find MJW. Can he get the boots? No. <laughs> level 8 Axe. Level 7 Jug. And they will just tip swords and then part ways. Although he will bump right into Marana. 747 does not have the ultimate, but does have a leap. And that'll be enough to break the Omni, I think, usually. Yeah, not enough damage anyway, I don't think, from Envy right now, just to bring yeah, him down. True. Good use of the Axe Illusions here. Have to push out top lane. Mm -hmm. They have Stan King backing him up. And MJW's doing a pretty good job. Level 8 on Axe. He's found a lot of experience, a lot of farm for 8 minutes, being only uh, you know, a third of the way from the Blink Dagger. Not too shabby. His Blink could be a big turning point in this game for FDL to start to grab a little momentum here. It's not a huge lead for NP, but certainly feels like they're the aggressors that are kind of setting the, the pace for this game so far. Yeah, we talked about uh, this nice ward down here, but uh, similarly up in the dire side jungle, Radiant going, oh, Susie finds MSS, and yeah, that is a quick burst of damage. Nicely done here, just between yeah. the and him. The typically tanky Darkseer brought down by the magic. Pretty ladies on mounts. I guess that's the, the counter to the ugly little Darkseer. Good little theme. Poor Team little crack going here for them. It sort of makes sense, right? The mounts could trample him because he's so low to the ground. He is pretty tiny. Him and Drow, man. Those are some of the smaller heroes. I, I like this ward, though, just because you're kind of expecting... Keep it light, Sand King. You're thinking, like, okay, they might come up here and do some farming and stuff like that, but, you know, they've been keeping their eye on that for a while, and just was like, no one's in here, man. Like, I am going to go get my Blink Dagger, so he could buy it now. We'll see if he feels like he could actually accomplish something with that or if, like, a Vanguard will be safer. Yes, that pressure is coming in mighty fast. So, yeah, Blink it is. Seems to make sense in the situation. This could be the massive turning point. We have the ulti on Bisa. We've got level three in the heals here on Aqua. And they're under this tower right now with a Blink Dagger up on Axe. Oh, this is like the dream. Oh, MSW boy. No TP. Here we go. MSS, he takes a lot of damage from Beast's ult, but he does survive through it. Now Aqua gets stunned up. The Moonlight Shadow's helping them out. They kill the Dark Seer behind the tower. It's kind of a clustered up fight. NP just can't quite get the angle that they're looking for. Envy joins the party, gets the Omni Slash off, kills Omni Knight. Now they find the stun on the Priestess of the Moon. Oh, She's in a lot of trouble. Time. Sand King will get brought down by the Axe. Susie trying to bottle up MJW. 
still in the fray, and now he needs to make it out. AUI, the big bruiser, late to the party, but now he's doing the big damage. The tower adding up. MJW with another dunk. Oh my, the turning point indeed. A double kill for him. And MJW becomes the most firm person in the game. Damn, dude. What Big a weird right fight. Top of AUI. Yeah. NP really forced the issue there, though. Like, FDL did such a good job getting deep in behind that tower. And by the time NP found him, it, it seemed really bad at first, but then they were so locked in that the, reac the, uh, the reaction from the rest of FDL was, was enough. And that wasn't even, like, all forces, right? Like, Stanking wasn't even there, and it was uh, late to the party from MJW because he had to TP home first to get the Blink Dagger, so we couldn't actually come right bottom. Well, yeah, fortunate it ended up that way. Stun from SVG. Uh, no follow-up. I guess. Ponies fall short. AUI's here, too. Blink Dagger Ursa. About the same timing as Axe. And they'll find the Omni Knight. Ah, the Repel. Buys him some time. He does have oh, the Guardian so Angel. To pop ulti and have your team TP. Yeah, yep. they'll do it. Guardian Angel comes out. MJW TPs in, but Omni Knight falls right away from the magic damage of Sand King. Blinding Light knocks back Stan King and MJW. But the fight's not over yet. Stan King getting isolated by AUI as Envy now comes in. MJW does find the kill on Sand King, but he will have to pay with his own. Meanwhile, on the backside, AUI will lock him down and bring him down. One for three. 7-7 seven to seven as NP regains some of that lost footing there with a huge net worth gain. Axe still number one on net worth overall, but now this opens up for Roche as NP heads straight for it. Yeah. The, uh, the, the reason I use the term tempting is because it still didn't look like a great decision, but at that point, like, <laughs> it, it's so deep, you know what I mean? It's like three people, they're like in here, and it's just like, oh, like, oh, I really want to do it, guys. Like, I think we can fight this. But you, bringing in reinforcements like that is always so tough. Oh man, the fog! Bisa goes for the play with the ulti up top, but MSS. Yeah. Waltz on out of there. Space created, as they say. Roche falls. AUI picks up the Aegis. 747 actually does come towards the pit. Needs to be a little careful. Has the leap, makes it to the high ground, but AUI and Envy, they can keep on keeping on. 1437 nearby as well. And the good use of the illusions, they can't get vision. And Murata will be able to TP home. Pretty nice. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, three heroes, I guess, they can't interrupt that, so you could always keep your finger on that one if SVG's not nearby or MSS. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, things are looking pretty good here for the side of FDL compared to last game. Now, NT has turned around, of course, that fight down bottom. Now, they're now leading by about 2K, but... Look at that overall, water slide of a gold even. graph, though. That's a, that's a big swing over three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly want to get stuff done still with MJW. You might see, like, a smoke play. Man, he is still rich. At 2k. So what do you get next here if you're the axe? Move right into like a blade mail or something, get some value stats and return some damage against the Ursa? Or do you just yeah, go for a vanguard, try to tank up? There's so many games where that the uh, blade mails that would feel like the best one, but up against an Ursa, it's, it's so scary. So it looks like yeah. it will just be the vanguard. Okay. Raw Damn survivability. Rage, yeah. Alright, MGW should find SVG, we'll see. Oh yeah. Stun away. Saiyan King will make it back, but now the poison's come to start scouting out. NP maybe thinking about a turn. AUI jumps in, but MJW jumps in the other way. Darkseer drops the wall. MJW will lose a lot of his mana before the repel comes out. Now the blinding light knocks Stan King back. Arrow splits the nines, won't connect on a single hero. Now NP comes Omni slashing in. GA forced out from the Omni. Keeps them all alive except the Shadow Demon. Just a quick one for nil, but FDL on the defensive. Could lose their Omni Knight. Susie caught by the stun. Heal from Omni, not enough, and it's a three for Aegis. AUI will throw his life away, but he comes right back. Full HP, full mana, and NP happy with another successful fight. Yeah, really well played by NP. Showing the power, keeping the light. Guy, okay. that recall is just such an insane ability. Yeah, the blinding light, too. Really broke yeah. that fight up, completely isolated the Shadow Demon, and made it an easy cleanup. Yeah, they really have no way to deal with that until there's like a Manta up on Bisa and, um, you know, I mean repels again, but you can only throw it so many. Only level one right now. Mm -hmm. So looking at inventories here, what do we got? Marana moving in the Aghanims, a little bit more than halfway there. Point Booster Ogre Club in tow. Vanguard now picked up by the Axe and Luna 
Well, just moving into the HOD, maybe a little stacking here at the Ancients. Both uh, Luna and Axe, pretty good Ancient killers. So a good item to have. And just some good survivability, gives her some extra armor, some extra damage. Dire side, what do we got here? Envy, right into the Yasha. Looks like 1437 will go for the Ags after all. A little bit ahead of the Marana on that quest, and uh, of course the Blink Dagger on AUI. <laughs> now moving into the Basher. What do you got, Yeah, Trent? that's a little bit depressing, eh? Oh, yeah. 2K still here to go for Susie. Tough game. And this is... Uh, we've already seen the greed of 1437 pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. The past couple games, he's played that Shadow Demon really well. He's gonna, again, he's gonna play the Coddle very well here to get up to those bigger items. He's just been so active in the these fights. Heroes. He's 3-1-6 and six right now. He's been involved in 9 of the 10 kills that his team's picked up. Well, and he's bringing people in, too. Like, just yeah. being so ready in those moments to instantly turn the numbers in those team fights. SBG. Top lane, Visa. Ooh, yeah. Good thing he's going on that. Yeah, dropped a Ford. stun, but... No follow-up. FTL start to rotate, though. And we could they, see they a little fight break Aqua. out. They catch the Omni. Aqua gets popped by the Juggernaut's ultimate. He didn't even have a GA to save himself if he wanted to. A nice easy kill there for NP. And Tier 1 tower. A little bit of vision. Helping out again. Just pretty crisp, man. Clean and easy stuff. Stan King hanging in the tree line here. Looks like they won't scout it out. He'll stay safe. 747, though. Still in Strug City, looking for anywhere to farm. Won't find a rune down bottom. Not a square to spare. Oh, oh, Stan King, he comes out of the trees, bumps right into 1437, sets it up for MJW, but hey, that's a blinding light. Coddle will still uh, be in a lot of trouble. AUI, he comes in, they reinitiate, they bring down Stan King and make it a one for one. SVG inbound, but looks like he'll just head back. <laughs> nice stun as MJW blinks forward. Maybe a small stroke of luck there, but it does uh, secure the retreat. One for one, two supports down. Oh, mid lane, Beast on Envy going at it. MB, low on mana the here. The there, but, but the Invis rune, yep. allowing him to be bold. And now the, the Yasha phase, he's pretty speedy. So, I'll just scoot down bottom. All right. 5k really net worth. Game Big lead. Like, Axe had to do, like, has to do things, right? You, you just... You pick this hero, and he has a nice early start, and then he's your big counter-initiating player, but when you're up against an Ursa, like, when they had that Aegis, you could see their smoke pattern. It's not something, like, really aggressive or anything. It's going through their own jungle just trying to secure that up, hoping that they're going to find a fight where it's just a couple people farming. They're not getting, like, you know, tower sieging or anything like that and hoping for an axe to blink into, like, four people. Just fighting into that Aegis made it so difficult. Now that it's even down, AUI is already up to do a basher and whatnot, but it feels like MJW just doesn't have... And enough friends to help him out, maybe? Like, maybe if it's, like, him and the both supports roaming around, there would be quite a bit of pure damage coming out. Yeah. I mean, him and the Omni, but... It doesn't feel like there's a hell of a lot of follow-up. He will go into the Blade Mail now after Vanguard, so we'll get some return damage. And again, the value stats, just helping out that mana pool is pretty helpful on Axe. Um, I think this game for FDL is kind of showing the, the potential weakness of Luna as a pick. When I mean, you... You don't see a lot of teams drafting Luna, and a lot of that is because this is the stage of the game where she just doesn't seem to offer a lot. Her ult can be a little bit hit or miss, especially in these fights when there's creeps around, other units, and she's just paper thin. If this Ursa gets up in her face, there's not really much Beast that can do to survive except pray for a GA or a heal from the Omni Knight to extend his lifetime. I feel like the Luna just hasn't had a big impact, and she won't really be scary for another 15, 20 minutes. I mean, maybe then the illusions from Shadow Demons start to add up, but that part of the strategy doesn't kick in for quite some while. This is what they need, though, right? These three heroes smoking up. If they can find that one kill and then bring the Luna into that push, so, like, starting off with Visa down here, going for the push, wrapping up around, this is a very predictable kind of a movement, though. So, if, you know, if they spot this Luna moving any further north, you would think that they're going to know exactly what's going on from the side of NP. From their vision, they've had this one here. Look, uh, that's actually raining scan, hoping they can find somebody, but... Well, this is either NP with just good map sense, or suspicious that there's nobody showing, and they'll move into enemy territory. Uh, well, I mean, look where this Luna is. Like, there's no question yeah. the supports. This is dire like, vision we're looking team... at right now. Yeah, the, <laughs> the whole team has to be in here if you're NP. You know that they're in there, because there's no way Luna's doing this, right? Absolutely. And now, now they NP, they smoke up and they'll head themselves. They'll leave Ursa down bottom. I was going to say they could recall him, but he'll just TP up. And now they'll look to take a fight. Got TP. Oh no, he actually continues pushing. 
Cancels the they really TP. want to catch him on the way out of here. Oh, courier. Nice. Nice crit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So far, so good for NP. Let's take a look at the side vision. This is FDL's vision right now. Not seeing much. Just a couple of heroes. And this is Dire Vision. They'll start to get a little bit of intel now. Oh, Moonlight nice. Shadow. Who do they catch on the back line? MJW goes cruising on in. AUI pretty low. I think they might be able to bring him down. Stunned up. Axe finds the dunk. It's a dominating streak ended. And MJW with that two-man call, that was huge. And then right into the arrow on that Ursa. Now NP starting to get split up here. Keeper oh, of the Light nice. gets dunked. SVG gets arrowed. It's a three for nil. FDL find the fight. And now they'll get this tier one tower mid. That is huge, 2,200 net worth swing. That's, that's a game winning ward right there. <laughs> Seeing them all coming on in, MJW with a perfect call and this is where your Luna does things, right? Yeah, no doubt. When uh, you can take a fight like that, you can really punish. They'll make the illusion. She still has the ultimate even. That was the crazy thing about that fight. FDL still have GA, still got Eclipse. If NP respawn and press their luck, FDL can still punish. Oh, NP, oh no, he tries to TP out, but MJW catches him with Berserker's Call. Goes right through that magic immunity. Teammates trying to TP in. They want to sandwich this jug. You see the two from mid starting to rotate over. MV has a friend ready to rendezvous, but MJW with the blink forward. Berserker's Call again. Purification with some nice pure damage. There's the demonic uh, purge, and NV should finally fall. Bisa getting credit for that one with a Lucent Beam. Very nicely done by MJW. Just catching Envy on the last second of his TP. Huge stuff here for FDL. Yeah, that was great. I mean, you're all pushing mid. You know everything's fine. They're going to be able to handle it without you. So MJW goes back hoping to get himself an and one and gets it. Look at that gold grab. Oh, I'm, I haven't... Whew, I did not think they were farming that fast. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but damn, dude. I mean... They nice. have three cores now at the top of the net worth chart. Just like that. And nice uh, gold on the supports now as well. Aetherland's going to be done here for Aqua. Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, diffusal Blades. Ursa and Juggernaut, two very good diffusal carriers, and both of them under construction right now. So yeah, some true. of Omni Knight's potency will go by the wayside here as Purge becomes I mean, a commodity. He hasn't even done anything yet, though, honestly. I mean, you know, in terms of the, the biggest fights, the Omni hasn't even been the most important one. It's just on MJW. That's true. But overall, the control will be nice from them, too. Yeah. But it does give them a tool as these... Uh, I and mean, the Omni will play a bigger role in the team fights, I think, as this game continues. For sure. More illusion spam. Tier 1 tower down AUI bottom. AUI wants to do, eh? Will be like, destroyed. 747. Oh, oh, oh chucks the arrow. Connects on Thieve and finds SVG. They'll both make it back. Yeah, what is AUI doing down here? He'll just cut the wave, it looks like. Interesting yeah, graphic. You have Visa. to uh, like try and figure out where they're going right now too, because like Roche is back up and online. If they can get a big kill here from the side of FDL, they could find themselves in the Roche pit. That would be great. But it looks like NP are coming forward. AUI actually heading in towards mid, so he'll find Bisa and the rest of NP are hunting for the rest of the squad. Oh wow, nice early bash there on the Ursa. He might be able to find this solo kill. One more. Moonlight Shadows deployed, and the Speedy Luna will be able to gallop away. But oh, now MJW oh, with the punish finds him with the Berserker's call. Blade Mail online, and they'll turn this one around, baby. AUI put six feet under as a killing spree is secured for the Axe. Wow. What a performance from him this game. 6-1 and 4. He's had so many key initiations. They actually ping the mid-tier they're, they're 3. They're picking mid, dude. They're picking Rex. All right. Are no we, buyback on the Ursa, so they'll have a window here where they can do some pretty serious damage. I think NP can hold this pretty easily, though, without the buyback. And this is a really bold play from FDL. I think Roche probably the, the safe play in this scenario. Looks like they will... Yeah, look where their lane is, too. Start to back out. Ooh, gem picked up by the Coddle. And he's had an Agonims now, so something else to keep in mind. NP probably won't be looking to fight during nighttime if they can avoid it. But daytime, keep an eye out for those big heals. Yeah, they're going to have a massive advantage. And smoke up here from the Radiant. They're going back in. So what do they see? They saw the Caudal. They saw the Ursa. This is Radiant Vision we're looking at. They see Envy. They see Rose. They go right in onto Eternal Envy. 
He gets off the spin. AUI reinitiates MSS on the back line. It's NP coming out huge. They pop the Luna, Omni, and SD before the GA can even come out. And MJW left all alone, much easier to deal with. They'll D ward and move right into the Roche pit. My god, it happened quick, but what a beautiful initiation from MSS. Instills the chaos, and the follow up from AUI is just too much for FDL to handle. All right, I uh, got DC ready to get started, so perfect. Good. What, what you missed that whole fight? Yeah, the entire thing. Well, sick analysis. Um, <laughs> it was clutch, I mean, though. I mean, it was really they, just NP did not hesitate at all. Envy got initiated on. He got off the Blade Fury, and then the Dark Seer Ursa just jumped in the back line, grabbed the Luna Omni SD, and they just evaporated. Without GA, it's pretty hard to win a straight-up 5v5 in close quarters. And uh, I mean, honestly, the whole fight kind of comes back to the fact of what they tried to do once they had killed the Ursa. Like they end up getting nothing out of that kill, right? Yeah. Like they're like, oh, right, let's go mid, but it's a little bit late, and that Roche was there for the taking. But you're up against Darx, so you're up against Sanking. It's still kind of scary to go for that. So I think there was probably some debate trying to figure out which one was which, but not even pushing out bottom lane was a big problem for them too. Now, now seven four seven caught. caught by SVG. Is the follow up going to be there though? Diffusal blade. Lacking on detection, Coddle's the one holding the gem, but he's so far back, can't dive the tower up with the rest of the team. Envy now initiated on, MJW doing some big damage, oh. the slam dunk comes, but there's the Aegis, AUI also, huge damage and he'll fall. GA's already been deployed, now maybe the turn can happen, SVG comes stunning in, but he doesn't have an ultimate. NP getting hyper aggressive, now the disruption comes out and they should be able to find this kill on the Sand King also. Three for nil, the Coddle does make it out with the gem, but just like that, the little lead NP picked up for themselves. Thrown in the rubbish bin. Kind of the same way their last draw momentum <laughs> happened, right? Where AUI just jumps in mid, trying to get the kill on the Bisa. This time it's SVG going a little bit too deep. And you have this big advantage. You have Aghanim Scepter gem here on 1437. You have the big heals. It's daytime right now. If you approach that as a squad and healing, what's the initiating power from FDL besides an axe? There's no secondary hero that can be like kind of sneaky and everything right. like that, right? So... You're just preparing yourself for MJW. There, there's no way they can hop in on top of you, so maybe a little bit of a slow roll might be the future here yeah. for NP if they want to think about it like that. I mean, diving the tower there would have been a kill without Moonlight Shadow, or at least would have been close, and just a, a kind of a miscommunication of where the gem is. And I think it's smart the Coddle didn't dive there. There's no way 1437 could have been in that position and then gotten out. Totally agreed. Just the, the classic slow roll approach with the heal spam is definitely uh, the way to do it. But now NP... Hot off that uh, last misstep, they will smoke up. Look for something else here. They leave Envy down bottom. Recall, of course, available. They'll bump right oh, into Bisa. Oh no, Luna! Nothing she could do. Blink of an eye from full to zero down bottom. Initiation. MJW looking for Envy. Omni Slash is used. Envy needs to be a little careful. He's got some friends inbound, but so does MJW. Oh my god, these defusals, dude. Envy. How Don't many did he use? He's down to three. three. AUI now on his way in, finds the bash, getting a lot of right clicks in. MJW probably gonna fall. Now on the other side of it, MSS and Rose. They drop down to join Envy. They isolate the Omni Knight who's out of mana, and it will be a twofer. On top of the Luna, they already picked off. Three for nil around the map. NP. Looking good. Man, yeah, he uh, because he went for the Omni, and then there was the self Yule, so he's to purge that off, and then he purged him again to slow him, and then he purged him again to slow. Heavy <laughs> <laughs> down to one charge left on his defusal blade. Hey, it worked though. They got the kill. Right now, Marana is hanging out up top. They will force the TP back home. So it looking, out the yeah. kill on Bisa though, and they don't actually get too much further though, right? Like they don't end up like pushing down the mid lane. Certainly building an advantage, no question for NP. Extremely good for them because they are knocking down um, quite a bit, quite a few heroes all across the board. But at the very least for FDL, they're not losing any big objectives, so they can still just push out, try and farm this up. The real problem from them is just vision at this point, as that gem is going to be extremely obnoxious because you just get like the night stalker effect every time from this keyboard light, where he just runs around and takes out every single one of your wards. Yeah, and the the positioning from one four three seven has been pretty good since he's picked up the gem, playing very conservative, not even come close to death, and he's not picked up a blink dagger, so can sit back and still find some initiation in these fights. Envy now uh, upgrades the defusal, finds himself eight more charges, so good news for him.
Could last them a team fight, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And Luna now up to a Dragon Lance, so a little more range on Bisa. Probably a Hurricane Pike inbound before too long. One of the nice things about Luna, with the addition of the aura, you can feel a little more comfortable going for, you know, items like HOD and Dragon Lance that you know give you good stats. Maybe not the most damage, but she still hits like an absolute truck. You know, almost over 200 with with each auto attack, and he's not even particularly farmed. So I guess you could say the same thing for AUI. This Ursa has now picked up his defusal. He's had the basher, but you look at the, the overall net worth, and he's kind of at the tail end of the pack. Some of the momentum from AUI has slowed down this game for sure. Yeah, I think um, for Bisa, like, it is one of those games where you're probably going to need a BKB, even though it's so annoying to get up against the Ursa. But it, it kind of feels like he might go towards something like that next. It, it is really nice getting like that Dragonlance because it is just stat efficient. You have a Shadow Demon. As you said, you already have that nice built-in damage from the Lunar Blessing. But yeah, the full-out damage might be required at some point. There is a Hurricane Pike already picked up here for Susie. So that would be nice. No Ethereal Blade or anything like that. Okay, uh, that's no kind of cool. You don't see this on uh, Marana very often. So far, his build's been pretty standard. Usually, it's like a Lincolns or something that you transition to at this point, but this gives him a little extra utility and will allow him to start to transition into a right clicker. You will see that if it's a long game, Marana's start out based around magic damage and then, you know, end up getting six slotted towards right click items. And they just all smoked right here. Um, judging from the movements, they might have an idea as to where they're going. Like, they, uh, they didn't see them smoke, but where everyone was moving around these wards, it's possible NP know what's up. Certainly looks like it. They're just scattered around the corners of the map, TPing back towards the base. FDL. Smoke gets broken by SVG. He walks out. He face checks it. And it will end in his death. Smoke down, boys. Could have been worse for NP, I suppose. But the smoke does yield a kill. Lanes are pushing, though. Top lane and bottom. Let's see if they want to put the pressure into mid. MSS getting recalled back to the base. Oh, it's so nice being Dexter in a game like this, man. When your Coddle just brings you back. You're popping Iron Shells way up top, so you're still pushing and firming at the same time as you're already back. Raid is set up for this big vac wall. Yeah, it's pretty nice. They're really using the Coddle effectively. Luna Illusions, though. This will be annoying for NP. She's at the point where they can just sit back, stand king, and make Illusions. <laughs> Repelling it so it doesn't even get blinded, dude. <laughs> it's pretty legit. I mean, look how much damage they did to the tower and forced out a glyph. This is that stage of the game where the Shadow Demon Luna really starts to kick in. And NP, they'll have to rip off the Band-Aid oh, at some point. Now, though. Oh, the Coddle Blast is huge. They get the tower. And with that FDL, we'll just back up. I think that's a good play. Hey, it is a Hurricane Pike for Visa. It's going to find that to be enough defensive item here. Um, seeing that the Agnum Scepter is coming from AUI probably makes that uh, an even better pickup. Knowing that there's no BKB or anything. I mean, more than likely, you're not expecting it anyway, but just to be sure. Yeah. You'll still be able to control him up using that Hurricane Bike. Keep yourself a little bit safer. Looks like there's quite the heated debate about Purge mechanics. That's uh, always good. Purge Repel. Check. Why arguing about it? I don't know. <laughs> I can't read and talk at the same time. MJW caught by AUI. Follow-up from SVG. Envy. Oh no, Bisa, he four staffs down. It stops the Omni Slash. It'll keep him alive. He's out of mana though. AUI finds the bash. Defensive disruption. I think MP just back out here. There's been a buyback used by the Axe. FDL looking for more, but they might not find it. 747 jumping forward. Gets his mana leaked. Nice blinding light. And drains a little bit of extra. NP probably pretty happy with that. They get a kill on the axe and force a buyback without taking yeah, too hurts, much undue man. risk. Lost almost 1600 gold, 1537 in the end. GA was not used though. And now 1437 initiated on. They know he's out of mana. Limited mobility here. He can't leap. He does have a couple of stick charges coming up. SVG whips the old as he comes stunning in. The force stabs proving very effective for FDL. Now Envy's hunted down by MJW. Or is he? Blinding light. 1437 again, making the play is on the backside. AUI trying to reinitiate, but Bisa catches him with a lucent beam fast. Four staff forward. AUI, perhaps still in trouble. MJW pops in. Berserkers call on two. Slam dunk on one. Slam dunk on the second. A gem hits the deck. And now MSS on the run. Sidesteps the arrow. Might still be in some trouble though. Berserkers call. Coming off cooldown. MJW, he grabs him. Line him up and knock him down. It's three dead on the side of NP as FDL shove out of the base. Wow, 
Wow. I, I thought MP were playing that really well. Like, they were going in, they were backing up every time it looked like it was going to be disadvantaged during the fight. But in the end, that buyback super paying off here from MJW. Like, it, it seemed like once the buyback happened, they were like, okay, let's get out of here. But then uh, 1437 brought Envy back in. He was at, like, you know, three quarters HP kind of deal. And they're like, no, no, we can go back in. We can fight this kind of stuff. And they, they go and, you know, it gets turned around on against. And he used to back out. And you're just on the run from an axe and the... Uh, <laughs> a Marana with very defensive supports in the back lines helping them out if you actually decide to turn. Yeah. Three this Roche, means three Roche. gold back up on MJW. That's insane. Not to mention, uh, Roche 3, Aegis Cheese now. Uh, Aqua will get himself... He's tricked out all of a sudden. He's got a gem of true sight. He's got cheese. FDL are back in pretty good shape here. The gold graph completely zeroed out and a small XP edge. Now belongs to the Radiant side. NP still not out of it. Is Envy? He just Envy. goes walking in. Um, okay. Blinks back yeah, to I safety. I guess they're but... assuming they're all on. I can see AY. I don't know. Say so GA is still available. Not even like he can just run in there and Omni Slash. MP wow, with... giving a lot of respect right now from FDL. Like, despite seeing them on this ward, uh, just the mobility overall, not wanting to fight into that. Absolutely. Well, NP, I think they'll uh, be looking to defend high ground at this point. No reason to try to force a fight into the Aegis, and they probably won't have to. FDL all grouped up as five. They're heading up the mid lane. They want barracks, and they are not waiting. Still, They've always going to be a very scary push. Um, having the Aegis is fantastic because they don't have BKBs or anything, but if they get caught out that wrong moment just from that Darkseer, that vacuum into the epicenter, they can manage to sync everything up here on the high ground for the side of NP. It's going to be pretty disastrous. It is nighttime, so without the power of their blasting heals, they're going to go for a wraparound play. And look at the nice positioning here from FDL. This is everything that FDL could ever want right now. Nighttime, Aegis, all of their ults, even a butterfly inbound for the Luna. They'll finish off this mid lane of barracks, but now the wraparound starts. Envy jumps in with the Omni Slash. Huge back wall. Follow up from SVG with the epicenter. Omni Knight and Axe die immediately. Now 747 gets bashed up by AUI. He'll try to run out. Moonlight Shadow's been used. B Sen Stan King might be able to make it out on the backside. This Marana just a little too elusive. They won't be able to track her down. They get two kills. It's a die back on the Axe now, and Omni Knight does actually buy back. So, with all of that factored in, it's a 3k net worth swing. NP, I think, fairly happy with that. Did they also kill the Aegis? No, Bisa survived through all of it. That was the dream, though. Axe and Omni Knight straight up. Like, mm -hmm. Probably the two best heroes on their team that you can grab right away. Uh, from there, they can just run everyone else down if they decide to stay and fight, so they're forced to retreat here. The only good part about this fight is the fact that FDL still do have quite a bit of time on this Aegis, so you might not be like immediately punished in from NP, like they don't want to overextend or anything and wind up into a bad fight, but yeah. Should have, uh, I, I think they've kind of regained control here from NP. Yeah, they finished off the ranged barracks mid, but the melee are still standing, so it is a, a reasonably good hold for uh, our, our dire team here. NP are going to run into carry issues, though, eventually. This Luna still has a pretty long ways to go before she's maxed out, and already she's becoming a big threat. And this Marana is transitioning more and more into a right-click type build. Now Manta style in the inventory. 2400 HP, 175 damage. Man, MSS just, like, sniped it there on that vacuum. So there's the boss yeah. purchased up by MJW. And they're just going for it mid. Wow. And GW's not even going to try and push top. They still have the Omni ult, the Guardian Angel, but lacking on the Eclipse for about 30 I think this seconds. Melee's dead. I don't think they can get back in time. They, are, they have a glyph. Can they? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're good. Blinding Light, good spell. Actually, an incredible spell against this strategy. You can only repel one illusion, right? Yep. <laughs> They're still going to bring it down, though. 747 jumps up to the high ground. They will opt to glyph it, so NP posturing as if they want to mount the defense. But Marana with just cool down, so many illusions. That long, so MSS, he's, he's still ready, man. Got to be cautious. They got it, though. Ah, there we go. Denied by Envy. Envy. <laughs> Good night, Varrocks. You've been killed by the swift hand of your own team. God, look at these illusions, though. And this costs absolutely nothing. They'll get some good damage under the tier 4s. 
Rinse and repeat, baby. That's an easy 200 damage. Oh, and they got the dire courier. What was it on the hunt for? Didn't have any items. It was just too close to the tier fours. Oh, poor oh I think it might have been MSS's plate mail, maybe that he wanted, but oh, saving yeah. for buyback anyway. Well, NP, they've got to make a play soon, or they will just slowly bleed the illusions. Blinding light helps, but this is brutal. Well, Aegis about to expire here. Yeah, there it goes. Five and a half minutes on Roche, so it will be a longer respawn. Well, no buybacks used by NP, and they delay. Aganim Scepter also picked up by Ursa. I don't think we mentioned that. Yeah, that's pretty important. Uh, one of the uh, nice changes this hero, adding that thing on in there. But mm -hmm. Range awesome. wall disabled, so additional survivability. Man. Yeah, making sure you can live up against MJW. Yeah. NP on the hunt. They call in the Ursa. Close, man. MJW just left. Yeah, catching Damn, the axe would have been them. pretty big, although his buyback has come up now. But even just forcing out the cheese. 747. Very far forward. Could get caught here. Rose almost sees him. Oh, man. He's got blink and leap. Envy wastes the Omni Slash and now has to I, make I it back. I think Susie just picked that out. Like, what just happened? Did I just get Omni when I had Manta? <laughs> Omni leap. MJW finds 1437. MSS um, comes MSS? in. He doesn't like save you, his friend. Really? Now he gets hit by the arrow. The slam dunk actually oh, no. doesn't connect. But what a strange sequence from NP. Thinking they could set up for a fight here, I think, with Envy from the tree lines. Not expecting the entire squad to be up here, but they're here, man. They are balling. Daytime, the heals will be there. Two buybacks already used, though, before the fight starts, and now FDL just go right back to the illusion harass. And we have uh, no way to deal with this butterfly, right? Yeah, we're, we're rocking nothing from EE, still chilling in the trees back here, but Risa, extremely dangerous to hop on top of. Even for the Earth, like, it's not like AUI can just chunk them down in time before someone is going to intervene, be it um, yeah. just like an arrow or MJW or an Omni Knight or a Shadow Demon. This is a hard... has come fully online. This is a hard spot to be in if you're NP. You can't just jump out and start the fight, but you also can't just sit in your base and let the illusion slowly tick things down. AUI trying as hard as he can to defend here, but uh-oh, on the back line, we'll see some initiation. MJW, the target of choice. They've already used the wall. He's out of mana, okay, but where's the follow-up? MSS, he's dead. He's not coming back for over a minute. Envy getting low, no Omni Slash. He's dead as well. He's got the buyback ready. But the ult from Luna punishes so hard there. And now without a tier three tower, this might be a lane of barracks for the taking here for FDL yet again. Susie's in, dude. AUI can't stand the heat. Now SVG with a pretty big ult at this stage. She just doesn't do enough damage though. Omni Slash from Envy bouncing around gets them all to about half HP. It won't be enough to save the barracks. And it's looking like we could be witnessing NP's first loss as a team. There it is, GG, FDL forces a game three. All right, those crisp plays that we were always praising from the side of NP, the, the clear rotations always backed up by Vision and whatnot, seemed to be pretty kind of standard, stable gameplay for them for every game that we saw, but we saw some serious missteps this time. Big overextensions uh, numerous times where they had an advantage, where it seemed like they were just diving maybe a little bit too deep, but FDL capitalizing hugely. MJW need to have a crazy game to come back from the way that game started. Like, he was the only one that had the items to kind of turn this into their favor and make sure that they were going to win this one. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely got to call him the MVP, but I think, like, uh, the animization on Beast, I think, was really nice, too. Not going too defensive, uh, getting into that Hurricane Pike, not going, like, BKB or anything, going right back to the Butterfly, yep. and uh, as well as Suzy, too. Uh, overall, just really nice game for everyone on FDL. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I was definitely skeptical about sacking the off lane, letting MJW start in the jungle with an Iron Talon, but man, was it worth it. He got that Blink Dagger, and he just took off. He controlled the whole early game and made up for uh, what his team was lacking. So game three on the horizon here, folks. This is still upper bracket, so no elimination, but uh, qualifiers here will continue for the big land coming up in Montreal this November. FDL NP game three after this.